Good afternoon, God-loving patriots or Americans. With a lot of things going on uh, around the country today, uh, I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes to see uh, how many people are able to tune in or if Facebook continues to prevent me. Uh, for bringing out the evidence that I articulated above. Give it a couple more seconds and then I'll proceed. Let me start by saying this, uh, sending out my prayers uh, to the people in Houston uh, that are dealing with the hurricane. So God bless them and their families. Uh, also, uh, with respects to a lot of the researchers out there that in the beginning that helped me out, uh, this couldn't be done without you. you this would have never happened so I want to say thanks but also I want to I want the American people out there the people within the movement to understand that there's certain things in life that cannot be cannot be for sale and to me the number one thing is when it comes to to our constitutional rights and to the death of somebody like uh, Robert LaFoy Finnegan some of the evidence cannot be for sale not even selling it to the family if anything, it should be free and given to the family. Um, that was one of the biggest uh, issues when when we started this, that there's certain things that are not for sale. And I will continue the, the, the preach and, and move that torch. Evidence is not for sale, especially when it has to be involved, that is directly involved with our constitutional rights or to the victim, to the family members. Uh, I'm going to start saying now by today's... Uh, so today, or yesterday, there was a news article, and there's a hyperlink for that, this, this article. So I want you guys to understand uh, where the information is coming from. Uh, it's, uh, it's dated it's from KATU News, Monday, August 28th of 2017, with respect to the FBI agent indicted in Lavoie Finnegan's shooting to begin trial. Also, the name of the agent is Agent... FBI agent W. Joseph Aster, Asterita. Um, the name is in that document and in that news article. Uh, why is this guy the only, the only person, the only one that's being indicted? I mean, we have other following co-conspirators like Kate Brown, Anna J. Brown. Uh, well, let's say, let's go with the, direct, the conspirators that were directly involved in the assassination of Robert LaVoy Finnegan. Stephen E. Grassi, Kate Brown, Ron Wadden, Jeff Murky, Greg Walden. Um, who else did I put in there? Uh, Boyd Brenton, David Ward. Uh, obviously, I gave you guys a list of names in there. George Soros through Calico Resource through Barrett Gold Inc. Uranium One. Uh, who else is involved in this? Uh, there's a lot of names which I articulate. Barack Hussein Obama, Loretta Lynch, uh, James Comey. Um, I put that in from, we, we were able to put that information out there. Now, back when we started with respect to the first trial with Shauna Cox, most of the evidence that, that I'm going to be presenting today, we subpoenaed Kate Brown with regards to her phone calls, emails, texts, and other communications. Corrupt Anna J. Brown squashed this evidence. Now, why is this? This is the only FBI agent that's being prosecuted for Robert Lavoie's Finnegan. What is the motive in this? So this is what this is what I think. Either the guy did not go with the status quo with respect to these criminals and the way he wanted to write his report, or or actually he did falsified that report. 
Now let, let's play devil's advocate. Let's let, let's look at it both ways. Let's say hypothetically that he actually was honest and did write a, an honest report. Well, is he going to subpoena Ron Wyden, Jeff Merkley, Greg Walden, uh, Kate Brown, Stephen E. Grassi, Boyd Britton, FBI Greg uh, Brensing, FBI Director James Comey, Loretta Lynch, Valerie Jarrett? Is, he, is his defense is going to actually subpoena these criminals? And if they are, if I was the Patriots that are either facing jail or still in the process of being prosecuted or the victim family, I would be in this trial attending every day. Every Patriot should be in that trial every day. The same way we, su we supported uh, the Bundys in that trial, in that first trial, we need to go and attend and make that, and make that known. We need to know what, what is going to be subpoenaed and what's going to be quashed in that de facto courtroom. We're going to see if this guy is going to be in a kangaroo court or not. Now, why did, why did corrupt Anna J. Brown quash Shauna Cox's subpoena? I'm going to bring it out to you guys. Matter of fact, there is another hyperlink with this service bulletin. Uh, the bulletin also came out with the names behind the assassination of Robert Lavoie Finnegan. Uh, the hyperlink is there. There is a PDF file, and this is a hard copy. Not that I just have it, but Shauna Cox and others have this right here. This document right here will perfectly articulate all the phone, the phone calls and texts, and I'm going to read them on by dates, times, and in chronological order, the way the phone log of Kate Brown. In addition, with the letter of Kate Brown going to Barack Hussein Obama and Loretta Lynch and James Comey. Let me add that in there. Here's another, here's another letter. And then we'll read this letter. And this is the other letter right here. So we'll read this letter and I'll provide and I'll be providing this letter. Now, my thing is, how is it how is this guy's FBI agent's defense team gonna operate? Are they gonna prevent him from having all this evidence to come out? Are they gonna quash it or are they gonna allow it? And if they allow it, don't you think our patriots should be there, especially those that are still waiting to be sentenced or those that still have to see trial? If I was them, I would definitely attend these hearings. So let me go. Let's go, let's go to the phone logs and let's talk about the communication and why this is so important with, with respect to Robert Lavoie Finnegan's murder. On January 19th of 2016, there's a phone call at 10.30 a.m. between Kate Brown and Stephen E. Grasty. At, the, at, at 10.50 a.m., there's also a phone call between Senator Ron Wyden with Kate Brown. That's dated January 19, 2016, which is a Tuesday. There's also, at 1 p.m., there is another phone log between Kate Brown and the White House. Who can we talk about the White House? Well, we know the documents. Barack Hussein Obama, Loretta Lynch, Valerie Jarrett, and, and, um, and James Comey. Maybe they were all there. Maybe they were in a teleconference communication. But one way, shape, or form, we do know that Kate Brown did call the White House. We also know that Kate Brown and Sheriff Ward also communicated on the same day. Also at, uh, at 12 p.m., Congressman Greg Walden also communicated with Kate Brown. What's funny is I like to see if the additional text, audio conversation, video conversation, email conversation. I like to see it all. I like to see everybody, every document open to the public and the media so we can see all the conspirators within the defective government that was behind the assassination of Robert Lavoie Finnegan. On January 20th of 2016, here's another document right here. It might be upside down for you guys, but January 20th of 2016, we also have at 7.45 a.m., uh, uh, Jeremy and Loretta Lynch calling with Kate Brown. We also have another phone call at 9.05 a.m., FBI, FBI James Comey with Kate Brown. Now, we have these phone logs, but we would like to get the video and audio of that conversation. But again, at corrupt Anna J. Brown quashed 
Shauna Cox's subpoena. Now, is this FBI agent going to go after these criminals that are trying to set them up? And I'm just going to pretend that this guy is a good guy and did not go with the status quo in regards to falsifying his report. And if that is the case, then that explains why this defective government is going after this man and saying that he falsified his report. I'm just playing devil's advocate, but guess what? Just food for thought, something for everybody to contemplate. Why is he the only one, only person, the only FBI agent uh, behind these charges? On January 21st of 2016, there's another phone call. At 4.30 p.m., Greg, the corrupt FBI agent Greg Brensing calling Kate Brown or vice versa. At 4.15 p.m., the same day, Valerie Jarrett also communicates with Kate Brown. Another phone call. January 24th of 2016. Valerie Jarrett communicates with Kate Brown. January 27th of 2016. Another phone call. Kate Brown communicates with Valerie Jarrett. With all these phone calls and all these phone logs that we have, that, ha that, that I'm showing you right, right now, will that FBI agent Joseph subpoena Kate Brown for these, for these phone calls, video and audio recording, text, emails, anything that you can think of. Need, all those documents need to be subpoenaed. In addition, here's a letter. This is a letter. And I'm going to read that letter for you. So maybe Joseph's attorney would decide to subpoena all these individuals. On January... This, this is Kate Brown on January 20th, 2016. The Honorable Barack Obama, Mr. President, on January 19th, 2016, I spoke with Deputy Assistant to the President and the Director of, Inter of Intergovernmental Affairs, Jerry Ambramson, to share my concerns with the handling of the occupation of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge by armed radicals. Today, I spoke with James Comey, the Director of the Bureau of Investigation. I followed up on this conversation by sending the enclosed letter. During my conversation, I, I convey the harm that is being done to the citizens of the Harney County by the occupation and the necessity that, that, it, that this is unlawful occupation and peacefully and without further delay from the federal law enforcement. Now, why should the federal law enforcement intervene when the Malheur Wildlife Refuge is under the jurisdiction of the sheriff. That is David Ward. I didn't say that. There is government documents that support my statement. So why call the fe uh, federal law enforcement? Why go to Barack Hussein Obama and James Comey and Greg Brensing? When, da when David Ward, there's document, government documents that state that that land was sold and that's under the control of the sheriff. Why wasn't this document also prevented from coming in? Food for thought. And this, if I was uh, the FBI agent that's being charged, Joseph, I would definitely start subpoenaing these documents or force my attorney to subpoena these documents. Let me continue. During my conversation, I convey, uh, hold on, I, let me start over. On behalf of all Oregonians, I appreciate your consideration of our desire to see this situation come to a close. And I thank you for your timely attention to this matter. Now, this is the same Barack Hussein Obama that also helped Kate Brown, corrupt Kate Brown, get reelected. There, I'm going to post a picture of corrupt Kate Brown and Barack Hussein Obama together. This is also the corrupt Kate Brown that was appointed as a governor. All right? So let's clarify that. She was appointed at this time. She was not elected, but appointed. Matter of fact, she's also in bed with George Soros to the DNC. She's also in bed with George Soros to the Lewis and Clark Law School through the UCLA. Just food for thought. Just for you guys to understand, George Soros is in the mix. Here's the other letter. I'm going to read this letter right here. This is another letter in which if I was the FBI agent Joseph that's being wrongfully uh, 
prosecuted by this defect, this criminal defect of government, I would also subpoena this letter and force this letter to come into admission. This is January 20th, 2016, Kate Brown to Honorable James B. Comey. Madam Attorney General and Director Comey, earlier today I spoke with you, Mr. Comey, to share my issues with the handling of the occupation of the Mount here National Wildlife Refuge by armed radicals. The citizens of Harney County are, re uh, are resilient and, and diverse and include members of the, of the Burns Paiute tribe. Like most Oregonians, those from Harney County have a historical result, uh, resolving different issues. Uh, collaborate, col uh, hold on, I apologize. Harney County history of resolving di uh, di difficult issues through a collaborating approach. They have worked hard through the years to develop the Mount Here Wildlife Comprehensive Conservation Plan. Is that the plan in which Les Zates, Zach Williams, or King Williams, and, and Ron Wyden part and Jeff Merkley and Greg Walden participated in? Food for thought. The Harney County Wet Wetland Initiative, the Harney County Restoration Collaboration, and the Harney County Wildlife Collaboration. I believe Stephen E. Grassy was also involved in this, huh? And the Sage Con, meaning the, sa the Sage Grouse. Stephen E. Grassy, Kate Brown were also in this with, uh, great, uh, with uh, Cliff Bentz. Let's not forget Cliff Bentz. It is for their work that they should be recognized. And yet the national, the national focus has instead been mixed on the out outsiders seeking to explore the manip manipulate a local matter for their own agenda. Huh. As you are both aware, for more than two weeks now, the radicals, radicals have been allowed to stay unlawfully in the refuge approximately 30 miles to the south of Burns, Oregon, in Harney County. While it is easy to assume that this occupation is in such a remote location does not threaten public safety and does not harm any, victim, any victims, the perception is far from accurate. Even, if, even before the event of January 20, 2016, the local community was put under strain by the presence of the outsiders who made unrealistic demand and began to harass law enforcement and their family members while, while all we were prepared for the intense but lawful pr protect protest on January 20, on January 2 in the, in the, in the town. Few were prepared for what, for what would follow. Now this is Kate Brown to James Comey and Barack Hussein Obama and, and uh, Loretta Lynch. Enforced contrary and, and interaction. The residents of Harney County are being in, intimidated by their own hometown by armed criminals who appear to be seeking um, accusations from confrontation. The harm being done to the, to the innocent men, women, and children in Harney County is real and, mani and manifest. We each passing day, tensions increase exponentially. In addition to the federal agencies deployed in town, the Oregon State Police and counties and cities from around the states are continuing to deploy additional officers to enhance local patrol and community safety. The reality is that this is not a sustain, sus, substantial law enforcement model for any extended period of time because this occupation occurred in, on federal land and it is approximate that the FBI and other federal law enforcement and tactics are, are, are the leaders for, on any response to, to it. We understand that the Mount Here Wildlife Refuge is not federal land. This right here is another perjury created by Kate Brown. Why isn't Kate Brown not being prosecuted? The Mount Here Wildlife Refuge was sold and it was under the jurisdiction of the sheriff. We have government documents that will substantiate that. Why isn't she not included? And she also lied to the president, Barack Hussein Obama, to the FBI director, uh, Loretta Lynch, and to the... Uh, uh, to the Attorney General Loretta Lynch and to the FBI Director James Comey. That is a state. That is a blatant lie. Mount Here Wildlife Refuge is not on federal land. It's in state land. Federal government, federal documentation will prove that. However, for the citizens of Harney County, as indeed all Oregon or Oregonians, I must insist on a swift resolution to this matter. Efforts to negotiate have been successful, and now it is unclear what steps, if any federal authorities might take to bring this unattended situation to an end and restore nor normalcy to this community. I, I request on behalf of my fellow Oregonians that you, that you entrust your agency to end the unlawful 
occupation of the Mount Here Wildlife Refuge as safely and as quickly as responsible. Signed by Kate Brown. Right there is a signature. Matter of fact, I will be posting that and there's a hyperlink for this document. Why is this document, why are these documents so important? Because one way, shape or form, we will put Kate Brown to commit perjury or we will demonstrate to the country and to the world how this defective government in Ore Oregon unlawfully went after the assassination of, Mer of Robert Lavoie Finnegan and the rest of the Patriots. Why? Because at the end of the day, what was the end game for it? Kate Brown with George Soros ties to the, to the minerals, not just on Steens Mountain, but also in Grassy Mountain. Matter of fact, this letter on Oregon, January 20th, 2016, by, Ven, by Vince Thor, Thornsberry, that's his name, Vince Thornsberry, which was signed by RTR, which I've told so many people, the technical review team, RTR, in which they help write lobbyists with, with the dirty politicians like Greg Walden and Errol Blumenauer and Stephen E. Gra and, and wait, hold on. Ron White and Jeff Merkley, Earl Blumenauer, and Greg Walden, through the TRT, will help Calico Resource steal the minerals of the people with the help of Richard Riggs, the Assistant Director, Oregon Department of Geological and Minerals Industry Manager and Mineral Land and Regulations and Reclamation Program. Technical Review Team, Rich Richardson, Calico uh, uh, from Calico Resource and Christine Whittaker, HDDR, right there. Those are the names that were behind Calico Resource in extracting the minerals. This is in Grassy Mine, but we also have Steens Mountain. And we all know that George Soros, after the assassination, had Barrett Gold Inc. merged with Calico Resource. Now you understand that George Soros is in the pocket. Ron, George Soros has Ron Wyden and Jeff Merkley and Greg Walden and Earl Blumenauer in his pockets. This the assassination was plain and simple for the extraction of the minerals. On Steens Mountain, where, where the Hammonds are, are at, and in Grasty Mountain. We also have a let here, another here uh, uh, article in regards to giving Calico, they'll go ahead to extract those minerals. This is why they had to assassinate Robert Lavoie Finnegan and, and try to assassinate the rest of the Patriots and the Bundys because of this. Now, if I was Daryl Thorne, if I was, uh, uh, who else was in that, in that, in that second trial besides Daryl Thorne? Uh, God, there's other names out there and I can't even, and I, and I forget because there's so many names. If I was them, I'll be attending these court hearings. If I was anybody within the Patriot movement, I'll be attending. Matter of fact, I would be reaching out to Joseph. I would like to see his documents in which his corrupt, defective government is, going, is trying to prosecute and use him as an escape goat. My, my personal opinion, I think he is being used as an escape goat. Now, if he's the only one that's being used as an escape goat, we should be asking why. Did he go with the, with the status quo? Or he went against the status quo? That's a question we need to start asking ourselves. This is a question that everybody needs to be asking. What's the end game with this gentleman? Did he or did he not falsify the documents? If I was him, I'll subpoena Kate Brown's documents because I want to know if he entrapped him to do what he did. Or Ron Wyden, or, 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 or Stephen E. Grassy, or David Ward, or Boyd Britton, or Greg Brensing from the FBI. Let's not get not forget Loretta Lynch and James Comey and Barack Hussein Obama. So all I'm saying is at the end of the day, there's a motive. So who's gonna benefit from this guy going to jail? Who's gonna benefit while this guy subpoena the documents that I just laid out? Because at the end of the day, someone is going to have to face each other. Or they might just acquit him as soon as he starts subpoenaing these documents and say, you know what? We don't want this mess. We don't want the Patriots to know how bad they got screwed. We don't want to know how bad the corruption is in, in the legislative office, in the, in, in, um, 
in corrupt Kate Brown's office, the governor's office, and Barack Hussein's office at the White House, the Department of Justice, the FBI director James Comey, and we already know that James Comey is tied to Uranium One, with with the uranium going to Russia through Canada through Russia, using the Clinton Foundation and his brother tied to this. So this is how deep the corruption goes. So they'll probably do one or two things: send them, send them away, make them disappear, or acquit them. But at the end of the day, we need to ask what's going to happen with these documents. The same document that Shauna Cox wanted, wanted, wanted to subpoena Kate Brown, and, and they were quashed, and they were, and they were, and they were suppressed. Would this guy do the same thing, or he would not do the same thing, or would the courts uh, squash the, the, the evidence? Because at the end of the day, there's always video and audio recordings. I mean, think about it. Can you imagine if the Patriot Movement get a hold of the video and audio recording that were said? And how they were going to set the assassination up. How they were covering up the truth. Is this why Corrupt K. Brown in the legislator's office want to take the people, the guns away from the Second Amendment, just abolish the Second Amendment, take everybody's constitutional rights? I mean, think about it. Why would K. Brown be so adamant and the legislators? Like Earl Blumenauer and Greg Walden is so adamant in taking the guns from the from the Oregonians. Just think about it. Reflect on that, on, on, on just that, on our actions. Can you, would you imagine if 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 we were to get a hold of those recordings? And the video and audio recordings, the emails and the texts that were going back and forth between Kate Brown, Barack Hussein Obama, Loretta Lynch, Valerie Jarrett, and James Comey and and, and, and Greg Brensing? Can you imagine what would happen to these criminals? Let's include Stacey Beckerman, Sally Amanda Marshall, Anna Akins, Chad Cargis, Rhonda Cargis, uh, Les Zate, Scott Acallister. they all perpetuated on the assassination of Lavoie. Can you just imagine? If the American people would get hold of that evidence. Something to wrap your head around. The questions that need to be asked by attorneys, if they decide to ask this, uh, uh, these questions, if Joseph is willing to force or demand his attorneys to do this, or would he just walk free and have all the evidence suppressed? We got to look at both sides. I can care less. Democrat, Republican, brown, white, black, native, Indian, African. I can care less. Because at the end of the day, it affects us. And what happened there, it affected everybody. In one way, shape, or form. Because our, it, we paid for these criminals to act the way they did. The de facto government. Is this why Les Zates told me that he can't wait for the UN to roll into Oregon? So by Les Zay stating that, is that why he's so adamant in helping Kate Brown destroy the Second Amendment with the legislators like Greg Walden and Earl Blumenauer and, and Brian Bouquist or Bouquest? Oregonians, just think about it. Just think about Les Zay's statement, what he told me. Hoping that the UN will roll in and when if and if the day they do decide to roll in. We already know that George Soros is part of Calico Resource and Barrett Gold Inc. We already know that George Soros is behind the United Nations. We also know he's behind the CFR and the Federal Reserve. We also know he's behind these criminals with the de facto government in Oregon. Can you imagine if the UN was to step soul in that in in Oregon, in Oregon, Harney County, or the Patriots would get access to those video and audio recordings, or texts and emails that was that went back and forth with those criminals that I just mentioned, 
And the only way we can find out is if Joseph decides to subpoena or have his attorney to subpoena these documents. And then pray that this corrupt, defecto judge does not squash the evidence. Or maybe have a whistleblower by accident release these documents. Now that we have Trump as the administration, maybe he decides to release these documents. The communication between, between Barack Hussein Obama, Loretta Lynch, James Comey, Valerie Jarrett, Kate Brown, FBI Director Greg Brensing. How about release those? Because I can't wait till I get my, whole, my hands on those videos and audios and texts and emails. So if I was Daryl Thorne, Jake Ryan, and all the other and all and all, and all the and other two other patriots that were there, I would be attending these court hearings. I'll be I'll be sitting down in front of that courthouse every day. And following this case, see where it goes. Follow the rabbit hole. Let's see how far this is gonna go. See if I'm right and see if I'm wrong. Or see if those researchers are wrong and the defective government is right. The only way it's going to happen is with you, America. Because at the end of the day, it's going to affect us all. We already know how, how they're going after Trump. There, We already experienced what happened to the Patriot Movement at the expense of this de facto government. And why Kate Brown is so adamant and, and taking everybody's gun in Oregon. Just food for thought, Oregonians. Can you just imagine if, if Kate Brown allows the UN, with the help of Les Zates, the UN to roll into Harney County. Or Cliff Bentz. Or can you imagine if you were to get access to the video and audio and text and emails that were, that were, that were said or sent back and forth? What would you do? Would you dance with these snakes or would you hold them for treason? All I'm saying is the hyperlinks are there for you to read and it's for you to pass. You you are the media. The only way the truth will come out is by you, by you continuing to circulate this. Because without you, there'll be no me. And without me, there'll be no you. And, the, and all the researchers that put their time into this. So at the end of the day, you know, God, God bless Lavoie Finnegan, Robert Lavoie Finnegan, his family, and all the patriots that were directly and indirectly involved. Um, and, you know, and to our military, uh, God bless them. And, you know, at the end of the day, we have to continue fighting and we got to continue fighting for the truth. Because if we can't fight for the truth, then what do we have for our children and our grandchildren? So I just want to say for those that, that, um, that support me directly and indirectly, thank you and God bless you. Anna J. Brown. Uh, well, let's say let's go with the direct, the conspirators that were directly involved in the assassination of Robert Lavoie Finnegan, Stephen E. Grassi, Kate Brown, Ron Wadden, Jeff Murky, Greg Walden. Um, who else did I put in there? Uh, Boyd Brenton, David Ward. Uh, obviously, I gave you guys a list of names in there: George Soros through Calico Resource through Barrett Gold Inc. Uranium One. Uh, who else is involved in this? Uh, there's a lot of names which I articulate. Barack Hussein Obama, Loretta Lynch, uh, James Comey. Um, I put that in from, we, we were able to put that information out there. Now, back when we started with respect to the first trial with Shauna Cox, also I, wanna, I want the American people out there, the people within the movement to understand that there's certain things in life that cannot be cannot be for sale. And to me, the number one thing is when it comes to, to our constitutional rights and to the death of somebody like uh, Robert LaFoy Finnegan, some of the evidence cannot be for sale, not even selling it to the family. If anything, it should be free and given to the family. Um, that was one of the biggest uh, issues when, 
when we started this, that there's certain things that are not for sale. And I will continue the, the, the preach and, and move that torch. Evidence is not for sale, especially when it has to be involved, that is directly involved with our constitutional rights or to the victim, to the family members. Uh, I'm going to start saying now by today's, uh, so today or yesterday, there was a news article. And there's a hyperlink for that, this, this article. So I want you guys to understand uh, where the information is coming from. Uh, it's, uh, it's dated it's from KATU News, Monday, August 28th of 2017, with respect to the FBI agent indicted in the Voy Finnegan shooting to begin trial. Also, the name of the agent is agent, uh, FBI agent W. Joseph Aster, Asterita. Um, the name is in that document and in that news article. Uh, why is this guy the only, the only person, the only one that's being indicted? I mean, we have other following co-conspirators like Kate Brown. Give it a couple more seconds and then I'll proceed. Let me start by saying this, uh, sending out my prayers uh, to the people in Houston uh, that are dealing with the hurricane. So God bless them and their families. Uh, also, uh, with respects to a lot of the researchers out there that in the beginning that helped me out, uh, this couldn't be done without you. You, this would have never happened. So I want to say thanks. But all. Good afternoon, God loving patriots or Americans. With a lot of things going on uh, around the country today, uh, I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes to see uh, how many people are able to tune in or if Facebook continues to prevent me uh, from bringing out the evidence that I articulated above. 